Hey guys, here's another step for the movie poster series. Now we're going to start using effects. One thing that will help blend is an effect called noise. So we're going to go down to noise, add noise, move this over here, and it's as we change it'll show us real-time effects. Use our hand tool to actually move down to look at an example. So that's pretty good. So as you can see, if you look closely, you can see the difference in how it's adding noise. Okay, that's way too much. Just little subtle amounts. Not nothing. Tiny, subtle amounts. This is barely going to be noticeable on the poster when it's actually done, but that's the point. You don't want to notice it. Now you can distribute it evenly across the entire image, or Gaussian, which is kind of like a, a lens. It'll have a slightly curving effect, which doesn't really work here. We want to keep it uniform. So maybe a little bit less, I'll say 7.51. And that's enough, I like that, I'm, I'm okay with that. But we're not done. Now we're gonna add a little bit of grain. Grain is great because posters are taken from photographs and photographs originally with the actual film used little crystals that's called grain and that's what makes the grainy looking effect and that's a great thing for a poster, it adds aesthetic value. So, filter. Texture, grain, and it's going to open up a new sub menu. And see, that's how you can see it just creates this wonderful effect that just not only makes all the colors pop and look desaturated and artistic, it just makes it look really interesting. So we can mess around with the intensity, make it ridiculous. That's too ridiculous. And help with the contrast, keep the contrast kind of higher. The difference between shadow and light is really integral when it comes to posters like this. It creates a dramatic effect that gives you an emotional effect. That's the idea behind a poster, behind a movie, everything. So that looks pretty good. I like that. You can look at different types of grain too. Let's try soft, see what that says, see what that does. Not much of a difference. I like regular better. It's hard to tell, but when you're using Photoshop yourself, you can look at it with your, with your eyes and you can tell. Press OK. So a little bit better. Now one last thing we want to do with the cityscape is make it so it doesn't look so crisp. And there's a way to do that. Filter. Blur. And that kind of helps. But I want to customize it. So we're going to go back up. Filter. And let's choose Surface Blur. You can already tell that it's got that it's having an effect on it, and it looks much more integrated. Not perfect, but much more integrated. So let's make a little bit of a difference and press OK. So that's not so bad. It looks pretty good. It's still a tad bit much. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm actually going to use the blur tool, and I'm just going to do a once over to help it blur a little bit better, just to help with those unsightly, obvious edges. Blur tool. Keep it the strength at 50%. A nice big paintbrush. Just go over it real quick. And that helps. It's a subtle difference, but it makes a difference. You can even do that with the mountain layer because it's obvious the, the, the difference between the layers here. I would do that too. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on the mountain layer. Let's get back to the blur tool. Let's make the brush a little smaller. Let's make it 75 pixels. And as you can see, I could do a better job with the erasing too. But just start blurring it out. Oh yeah, that's so helping. Don't do it too much, because then it'll be obvious, but really, really helping out. Better, much, much better. Now you can make changes and you can experiment to see what works perfectly, but generally, I really like that. Now there's one last thing I want to do, and I feel that the mountain range behind the cityscape is a little distracting and I really want that city to stand out a little bit more despite the fact that I was trying to blend it. So stay tuned I'm gonna go over using the eraser tools as well as the healing brush tools and patch tool for the next video.